In this tutorial, you will need Buju, Cinema 4D, and Adobe After Effects. Thank you. Hey, what up, guys? Ryan, Maniac V2, and I have the uh, 3D motion tracking tutorial on uh, 3D text on a real life video, or any video of that matter. Um, so, what you're going to do first is um, we're going to head on straight into this tutorial. Um, what we're going to be looking at is something like this um, today. Uh, you're going to be learning how to do this. It could be on a COD clip, a real life clip, but anyways, I did mine on a real life clip, and it looks pretty good, if you see here. Um, it looks pretty damn tracked. So, anyways, um, what you're going to do is just make sure you import your sequence, um, make sure you have the size, just import your uh, your video into After Effects, and this is the crucial part, this is the most crucial part of the whole tutorial, so... Anyways, load up your clip, and then, uh, you know, just load it up like that. And then hit Composition, Add to Render Queue. Um, and then what you're going to do is gonna, you're going to use um, render settings for an image sequence. So what you're going to do is make sure all these are the right settings. If you have not worked with After Effects before, then I suggest you watch another tutorial on how to use After Effects. But anyways, this is a more advanced tutorial. So uh, what you're going to be using today is an image sequence render setting, and TIFF usually work for me. I don't get any bugs or glitches. So yeah. Uh, format options, just leave that alone and uh, just hit OK. Now here's the important part um, as well. You're going to want to create a new folder just for this render because there's going to be about a thousand or so frames um, depending on how long your video is. 30 seconds is about 1500, 1500 frames depending on your frames per second rate and also your video length. My video is 30 frames per second so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, that's about 1400 frames for my video because it's about 28 seconds. So what we're gonna do is just save it in a new folder. Mine's called Shrack Sequence. And uh, anyways, what we're gonna do is um, you're you're just gonna make sure your frame rate's right and everything. Um, if it's if it's 60 frames, use 60 frames per second. But uh, yeah, so you're gonna hit render, and then once you're done rendering, you're gonna open up. Buju. Buju is part of this tutorial. So, uh, yeah. You're going to need Buju as well. So, what you're going to do now is you're... I know this is a different video than I just used, um, but I couldn't find the Buju file for the, the street video, so I'm just going to show you what to do in this. But anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Setup, Import Sequence, and then you're going to find your sequence in here. Alright. You're going to find your sequence in here. So set up, import sequence, and you're going to find that image sequence you just saved. So really, I'm just going to go look for it in the uh, movies section, not the Call of Duty 4. Um, so movies, mine's in the street folder, and it's a street sequence. So all you're going to do is click open, and then um, just click on the first frame and click open. Now it should be calculating your your uh, frames. It should be calculating to the end from step one all the way to end frame. And yeah, if it doesn't do that right, then you didn't import it right. So then you're gonna choose your frame rate in the frame rate section right here. Choose I I choose 29.97 and I hit apply. Now you see it might glitch back to 25. Yes, it did. So hit 29.97 and apply again. And then um then I'm just gonna hit close. And then, and you, then your video will be loaded up in here. But I'm I'm using sequence one because I don't want to have to. Uh, you'll see why. But anyways, I'm just going to use my uh, sequence one instead of the one I just opened. But anyways, what you're going to do is um, hit track features. All right, you're going to hit track features. Um, and what this does, it just tracks the camera movements. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to hit sequence one and all frames. Hit advanced. And make sure it looks good right there, you know. It doesn't look... It doesn't, make sure there's a bunch of dots, not just like two or three. But, um, anyways, just, you're going to hit start. And then, once it's done, you're uh, going to hit camera solve. So, make sure track features... Uh, it might take a while, but anyways. Just once it's done, you're going to hit camera solve right below track features. And uh, you're just going to... Just don't optimize camera path smooth, smoothness. I never really tried it, so don't do it. And then you're going to hit start. Alright, and usually it starts on 0.00%, 0 .00%, and 
and then it gets faster and faster until it starts jumping by like five percent. But it'll yeah, it'll start on like point zero zero one, point zero three, point eight, and then it'll start jumping up like that. So, anyways, once that's done, once that's done, you're gonna go to setup or not setup. You're gonna go to export right here, export, and you're gonna export the camera solve. All right, and then make sure your end is the right frame and your step starts at one. Um, so you're just going to um, <clears throat> make sure that it says sequence one, it's a camera solve one, and uh, Cinema 4D, because we're going to be working with Cinema 4D today. So um, then you're going to make it say moving camera and static scene. So what we're going to do is change the scale scene by 100. This just makes it um, better for Sim 40. I've had bugs with uh, scale by one, so we're just gonna have it scale by 100, and then we're gonna save it, and uh, make sure you remember what you scaled it by. Uh, it should be 100, but anyways, just hit save, and then uh, you, then we're gonna head into Cinema 40, and I'll uh, see you there. So, anyways, guys, now that we're in Cinema 4D, we're going to be opening up the camera track to use on our video, and uh, I'll show you what the camera track actually does. Um, so what you're gonna do is find your um, find your you know your uh, your the file that you just you the fi find the file that you just exported from Buju. It should be a Cinema 4D file .c4d. This one is what I did last time uh, on my my previous video. Um, I'm gonna just use this one because it's already rendered out. But anyways, street c street .c4d. Just double click it, whatever yours is called, and then make sure the scale is by 100. Or whatever you scale it by, but I prefer 100. So, anyways, uh, just click OK, and uh, you should see some dots and a plane down here, maybe. But don't worry if there's not as many dots. That just means you didn't track as many areas because you just, you just, I don't know, you just didn't. But, anyways, this is what the camera solve did, did or does, whatever. Um, it, it gives it that effect that I'm actually moving the camera so that when we add our video in, the the uh, the camera matches. The video's camera, so, uh, so you'll see what happens. So go to materials, file, new material, and uh, just double click on your material, leave everything blank except for color and specular, and then you can go to texture, and you're gonna load the image. Now um, you're gonna find your image, and it should be a bunch of frames. Uh, click on the first one and click open, and then hit. Uh, this is a Cinema 4D broadcast. This image is not in the document. Just hit no. All right. Now double click on the image right here, and uh, just make sure um, you hit the animation up here. Just hit animation, movie frame rate twenty nine point ninety seven matches up to whatever yours is. All right, <clears throat> and then you're gonna hit calculate, and uh, see it goes back to thirty. Um, there's really nothing we can do about that. It just it'll jump to the nearest whole number. So. <clears throat> just leave it at if it's yours. If yours is fifty nine point ninety four, just it'll go to sixty. So just don't worry about that. And it should be it should calculate from one to your last frame. So then just click X up here. And um, now what we're gonna do is create a background. So to put the video on, so go to this light button right here. Hold on it. Hold down and uh, drag your mouse over to background. And then drag your material up to the background. And now we see our camera movement matches that of the camera in my video. So watch what happens. First of all, what we're going to do is place a plane. Okay? And then without doing anything, don't touch anything, don't make it bigger, nothing. All right? Put a MoGraph and a Mo text or whatever object you're putting. All right? Whatever object you want to track. So. These are very important. The plane and the text, don't move them. So now what you're going to do with the plane and the text is highlight both of them and then get the uh, enlarge or the scale tool and scale them up as, as big as you want it or as small, whatever. But uh, scale it up. I'm going to scale it up about this big just for the purposes of this video. And uh, the plane is kind of off of my text, so I'm going to move it under, directly under my text. And now what you can do to the plane by itself is go to the scale tool and uh, scale the plane up just a bit like that. All right. Now, what you want to do 
is align the plane and the text together, highlight both of them, all right, and align them both together with the street. So I'm going to make it look like look like it's on the street, kind of like an illusion, all right? So anyways, just make sure it looks kind of like it's on the street, and um, I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make these a bit smaller, like that, and I'm going to move them both over a little bit. And uh, that looks like it's pretty much on the street, maybe a little bit more tilt, uh, just like that. And uh, anyways, then you go to your Motex, and since we the scale was 100, everything um, is smaller. So what we have to do is just turn that up to about 500, and you're good. Turn the depth on your Motex up to about 500. So um, now that we have that, uh, what you're going to do is see, go click on the background and go to the material and hold control. While you're holding control, click on that and click on the material and drag it up to the plane. And uh, as you see, this gives the material of the background to the plane. So the plane kind of camouflages in. But when we render it out, it's all dark still. So what we're going to do is click on the plane and click on its texture. And we're going to go to um, Tags. Um, Alright, sorry. Click, just click on the plane and go to Tags, Cinema 4D Tags, and Compositing. All right. Now, still, it's still kind of you know dark. So what we're gonna do is go to plane, click on the compositing tag right here, and click compositing background. And now the plane is blending in with the ground. And now we want to create shadows. So what we're gonna be doing is just lift the text up a tiny bit, and then go to your render settings up here, and go to effect, and you're gonna hit ambient occlusion. All right. Now what this does is it gives a little bit of sh more shading and and uh, shadow. Uh, as you see, it's not really that good uh, right now, but uh, it will be in a second when we mess with the lights and stuff. So, anyways, just uh, have your text right on the plane, and uh, you'll see what happens. So, anyways, now we're gonna go back to ambient occlusion and mess with the shading. So. Go to your render settings and go to ambient occlusion again and turn the maximum ray length up to about 160 and turn the contrast up to about 40. All right. And uh, now, as you see, I think there's going to be a little bit more shadows. See, you see kind of some shadows down there, but that's not good enough. You see the tree shadow? We're going to have to match that. So what we're going to do is just look around, the, look around your scene and see the shadows, see the shading of your scene. And... Uh, See, my shadows are all going that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the first frame, and uh, we're going to put a light up here, up in this corner, where the sun would be. And uh, anyways, for the light, we're going to go light, and uh, we're just going to put the light up in here. This is basic lighting. I would do a lot more advanced lighting, but um, I just don't have the time right now. So uh, the light's going to go up here, and uh, you can mess with the coordinates. Uh, yeah, Y up a little bit. And then you're going to go to sh Shadow on the light and hit Shadow Map Soft. And now you're going to turn the density down to about 85 and uh, the resolution maybe 200. Alright, now what this does is it gives um, off a shadow in the back. And uh, we can always create a new material for our text as well too. So uh, we can change the color to white. So it's not as uh, gloomy or uh, shady looking. And uh, now we have sort of a white texture. And uh, as we go through the video, you'll see uh, the text is perfectly tracked to the video. And when we're up close with it too, you can see the shading and the uh, shadows that are on the ground. And now, I mean, these shadows look pretty dang good compared to those. You can always turn the density up a little bit to make it a bit darker and turn the resolution up to make it a bit farther. But... Um, Anyways, that's, guys, that's a basic motion tracking tutorial in Cinema 4D and Buju. Um, but, guys, this has been Maniac, and I'm sorry if this tutorial was not helpful enough or I kind of jumbled on, but, anyways, I tried my best, and uh, if it helped you, please comment and like and subscribe. Uh, thanks, guys, and uh, remember, you're going to need Buju and Cinema 4D for this tutorial, and you're going to need to save to an image sequence. So, thanks, guys, and uh, I'll see you later.